What's good, Detroit Sports Nation? I am Eric Vincent, your host here at the DSN News Desk. Thank you for tuning in and showing your support. It is greatly appreciated. Thank you for stopping by. And I know I've been away for a little while. I greatly appreciate some of y'all who hit me up on social media asking, you know, making sure we're still on board. Y'all just took a few days, a little vacation, a little break, a little time away for just a quick second. But as I come back... Been a lot of things that have updated, and I really wanted to get in on one that just came out today. A huge update in the Detroit Pistons world where Isaiah Stewart, as we saw yesterday, suffered an injury against the Toronto Raptors, was not able to finish the game. Uh, according to Woj, as well as uh, James Edwards III, I believe, reported from it as well um, on the story. Isaiah Stewart is set to miss two to three weeks and when he'll be reevaluated for his right big toe injury that he suffered against the Raptors. This is a big deal for a lot of reasons. First of all, first and foremost, I really hope everything is good with Beef Stew. Really hope he has a speedy recovery. Hope the uh, reports and the medical expense, hopefully everything is good on his end. I really want to see him, you know, recover and get back on the court as soon as possible. That's most important out of this. Second of all, in terms of the basketball aspect, this is going to reveal a lot. We've talked about how, at least I've said that, I wanted to see a rotation update for the starting lineup for the Detroit Pistons up to the 2025 game period. And we're within that now. Some of it is due to circumstance because of injuries. And now at this point, that's exactly what it lines up for with Beef Stew. And those changes are now arriving. But before the injury, the Pistons shook their lineup up in their rotation. They put... Sadiq Bey on the bench, something we talked about, something we said could happen, and it did. He went to the bench. They started Marvin Bagley, who came back. And they paired him with Beef Stew at the four, Bagley at the five, Bojan at the three. They tinkered with it. They tried something new out. And in some stretches, it looked okay. I didn't love all of it. I didn't love, you know, a lot of the game that they played. Unfortunately, they lost against the Raptors. But you could tell by... It's just the presence of having a seven-footer of what you're capable of with this team and what they've been missing thus far. And, and that's not to say that Marvin Bagley is a savior. He's still trying to get his footing together, still getting, you know, recovering from that knee injury. He's still trying to get comfortable. But the Pistons are now in a position, especially with Dwayne Casey. I know you guys keep talking about it in the comments, that Dwayne Casey now is in a position where he's going to have to make some important calls that show how competent and how his fit with this team truly is going to be decided because he now has to set a new lineup with this team and one that's going to have to see that they can be built around. Some that's just going to be able to reveal some of the young talent that they have, try some different guys in different positions, and nothing is really set in stone at this point. Like, for me, with things that could turn out with this lineup for the Pistons, I think we can see maybe an option of three different lineups. Realistically, this is when Kay Cunningham comes back. Obviously, he's hurt now, but realistically, when Cade is back, and I guess they're you know in full strength, for right now, what they could go with would be a pairing of Cade, Jaden Ivey, Sadiq, Bojan, and Bagley. They could just bring Sadiq right back off the bench. I really like the idea of what they did, bringing him off the bench and playing him extended minutes in that Manu Ginobili-type role like Dwayne Casey coined. So... I was okay with them trying it out, but given the circumstance now without Beef Stew, where you're missing another rebounder, uh, he was averaging 12 points a game, and he was giving, I think, nine rebounds a game as well, so you're missing a bit of that inside presence from him. And a lot of times, Sadiq Bey, he's not, I don't want to look at him as one of your primary rebounders, but he's been one of the most effective rebounders on the Piston lineup, given their lack of size that they're dealing with as well. So, normally when we see Beef Stew have his most productive games, or the Pistons have their most productive games, it's not when Beef Stew was alone giving you double-digit rebounds. It was when Kane was coming along for the ride, also giving you double digits. Jaden Ivey has kicked up his assistance as well on the glass. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to get that with the size with a Marvin Bagley who's just been entered in that lineup. Again, rebounding isn't necessarily his best strength. But with his size and with the help around him, it should be something that he could be able to excel at at this point. So we're going to be having a lot of eyes on if they were to put Sadiq in that place. And it would be solely on Bagley to be the big in the paint to provide that you know production that they're looking for. You also could see Cade, Ivy, Bojan, Bagley, and Jalen Duran at the five. I would love this the most, honestly. 
I think this would solve a lot of needs. I think it is the honestly their best long term projection for them and their best lineups that they could run. Um, but for right now, I've been calling for it. I've been wanting to see Jalen Durant in the starting lineup. I've been wanting to see him playing extended minutes. I've been wanting to see him build and develop chemistry with Kay Cunningham, Jaden Ivey. I wanted to see him build the rapport with those guys. He wasn't getting that on the bench. He's still not getting it on the bench. I want you guys to watch the games and count how many times Jalen Burt Dern touches the ball on offense. Now puts up a shot. Now grabs a rebound. I'm just, just touches outside of rebounds alone. Count how many times he touches the ball on a dribble handoff. Or if he catches it at the elbow to make a swing to, you know, a winged uh, shooter or something on the, on the outside. Or even get it to him in the post. Count how many times he just touches the ball. 90% of the time when he's getting it, it's only when he's grabbing rebounds or slapping extra opportunity rebounds for the team. They don't feature him enough. You traded up to get this guy. He is the he is the highest ceiling of any big you have on your roster. I don't care what you think about Marvin Bagley right now, Isaiah Stewart right now, or any other big on the Piston roster. Jalen Durant has the highest ceiling of all of them. And he's shown you that the mechanics and the things that he's going to be working on are not broken. So he's still being able to develop, but I think he develops better with Kay Cunningham in the starting rotation next to him. When you watch Killian Hayes and Alec Burks and even Hamadou Diallo now, like they're just playing ISO basketball. Corey Joseph's not really looking to get during the ball. Now you can at least, you give a different look because when you look at how Beef Stew has been playing this season, he's been getting up three and a half threes per game. I think the highest he's taken this season, uh, the amount of threes he's taken, I think was maybe five or six. Like he's getting a healthy number of threes as kind of a, I don't want to say it's a part of design because you, I don't think the Pistons are necessarily drawing up three point looks in the, you know, at halftime or the lineup for Beef Stew, but defenses are playing off of him. So they're kind of forcing him to be that shooter. I think now the Pistons can look a lot different with a Jalen Duren in the lineup now because now he has the ability to, or at least the threat to post up on the block. He can be effective in different areas where most of the time when we saw Beef Stew, he was catching it outside on the perimeter and getting up a shot or trying to drive. Or maybe he was getting a shorthanded, uh, you know, dish off from one of the guards where he would, you know, be able to put it up easy at the rim. But a lot of his shots, for me, it seems like he was really getting just the left open jumpers. And I don't, while I do want to see that develop for Beef Stew, I don't think that's coming to the betterment of the Detroit Pistons. I believe they need bigs and size at all times on the lineup, all times on the floor. You have a 6'7 guard in Cade. Jaden Ivey's big in himself. He's 6'5 with damn near a 7-foot wingspan. Sadiq, big in size. Bojan, maybe not so big in terms of what his size and stature gives you, but with his skill set, he's a perfect fit around other seven footers and other big targets around you in the offense. He can be a floor spacer and take attention away from Jalen Dern to get easy lobs or dunks at the rim because he can take that attention away. And defenses will pay attention to that because of how good of a shooter and scorer Boyan is. So he takes that away. Dern gets more easy opportunities. I think you're going to see a lot more of that if Dwayne Casey rules that out. I don't think he's going to do it because he's very stubborn in terms of playing young players. But if you can start Jay Ivey, you can start Jalen Duren. That's my opinion on it. That's how I look at it. I think the last lineup you can maybe see, we hit it to it a little bit. Cade, Ivey, Sadiq, Bagley, and Duren. And then you would have Bojan coming off the bench. I don't think they'd do this. I don't think that would actually happen. I think this is the least likely of all the options. Because Bojan has been playing too well at this point. He's been the most consistent Piston, to be honest, throughout the entire season. He's had some stinker and up and down games, but for the most part, he's been the most consistent player on the team. He's averaging what's still like 19 points a game. He's coming off, you know, the majority of the games as the Pistons' leading scorer and one of their most reliable, if not their the most reliable shooter that they have right now. I don't think they can afford to leave him on, not leave him on the bench, but take him off of the bench. I think you're seeing guys like Isaiah Livers catch a little bit more rhythm on the bench with his jumper. So they have guys that they can rely on with that. Alec Burks is a good shooter off the bench. I don't think it's a necessity to have, to add another shooter when you need shooting in your starting lineup. 
So I would prefer to see Bojan in the starting lineup. I think that is the best serving idea for this team, considering how good he's been playing and considering how important it would be in terms of the spacing for the Detroit Pistons. I think that's most important for them. It's a lot of options. And honestly, we talked about Isaiah Lewis. It's not an impossible idea to think maybe he could be a starter. He hasn't been fantastic this season, but he's still growing in his role. He's, I think, getting a little bit more comfortable with his shot. And now that Alec Burks is back in the lineup, I think that's going to help serve for more open looks for him. Isaiah Lewis has been playing pretty good basketball as of late. Um, didn't play great against the Raptors, but outside of the Raptors game, he's been putting a lot of double-digit scoring efforts up um, as of late. Um, so I'm really impressed with what I've been seeing from him. I really want to see him continue to grow as a defender and helping other people get in their spots as well to do so. He's an important piece for this bench, and I think maybe if they want to, again, because shooting is super important for this team, and no matter how you strike, you still will probably need one more. If Sadiq goes to the bench, you're still missing a shooter. Bojan goes to the bench, you're missing a shooter. Marvin Bagley's not a knockdown shooting big. Jalen Duren's not going to be asked to be a shooter like that. So the possibility of Isaiah Livers being thrown in that starting lineup is not impossible. It's not impossible. If he's big enough in size, he can switch very well defensively. That's another possibility as well. But I think that's something important. You're going to see a lot with this team. I think I think defensively they're still going to be bad, but I think they're going to play different now because Beef Stew was very good at switching on the outside and you know being able to rotate on bigs, which is a lot what other bigs in the Pistons do as well. Marvin Bagley not so good at it, but hopefully with the help around him, he'll be able to improve. But I think they're going to play a little bit more you'll probably see a little bit more highlight plays. You'll see some more Jalen Duren blocks. I think he'll be able to translate well with his rebounding if he were to become a starter and play extended minutes because with his size and his act- his activeness in the paint, because, again, he's not getting the ball that much, so he has all the energy in the world to try to tip and get rebounds for this team. So I think it's important to make sure he's still getting as active and involved as possible. Um, but as of right now, I think they're going to play a little bit different. Again, offensively, they're going to look different as well. I think instead of prioritizing and looking at those quick shots by Beef Stew on the top of the key or maybe in the corner where he was shooting, maybe that doesn't happen anymore. Maybe now those mo- those plays become now pick and roll with Cade and Jalen Duren where he's rolling to their hoop. Or maybe it's popped with Marvin Bagley, who developed a very good chemistry and development with Kay Cunningham last season. Jay Nivey showed the ability to be able to hold the ball too and orchestrate offenses half court. So we need to see that with him as well. He's been very good at passing and facilitating. So the Pistons got a lot of decisions to make due to this injury. Again, I really hope everything is okay with Beef Stew, but I'm very, very intrigued to see where this goes. I'm very intrigued to see what Dwayne Casey does because these are the decisions that kind of define who a coach is. It's not your, like, when things are all good, it's easy to see, you know, where you're going to go. But when you have to make these kind of calls where you're making lineup changes, you're making, you know, play call changes, you're changing your style of play on the court, these kind of things that they develop show the kind of coach you are because you have to be able to make adjustments on the fly. The way Casey, you're on the clock. You have to be able to make investments. You have to be able to help the Pistons still be able to play to their strengths without Beef Stew. And it's going to be interesting to see how they do it. Talk to me in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. How are you feeling about this injury with Beef Stew? And what do you think the lineup is going to be? What do you think the starting lineup should be? And what do you think it's going to be? What do you think Dwayne Casey's going to do? We know how he does it. He always he always falls for the veterans. We know he loves him some Corey Joseph. Maybe he'll find a way to throw Corey Joseph in the starting lineup somehow. We never know. But I'm keep tell me, talk to me in the comments. I'd love to know your feedback. What do you think the starting lineup is gonna be with Beef Stew out for these next few weeks? And uh let me know what you're thinking about the pistons right now, man. Uh make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel. We're getting closer and closer to the milestone of five thousand subscribers, and we would love to welcome you into our channel so we can keep this great content going for you. Hit subscribe. Rock with us. Make sure you're locked in right there. And, of course, tap into our social media as well on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all of the above. Search and follow Detroit Sports Nation. And follow me as well at I am Eric Vincent so I can stay locked in with you on the Twitterverse. I appreciate you locking in. We'll be back again very soon with another update right here from the DSN News Desk.